So what we built here, this is a PIC32 gaming console that supports uh, analog video output. It takes an input from a Nintendo NES controller and also synthesizes audio output from this 3.5 millimeter audio jack. And right now, we have written a fully implemented game engine with it. So anyone, any hobbyist can develop any game on top of it. And today, we have implemented a simple game called Rope Jumper, and we are going to demonstrate here on this television. All right, so the PIC32 is generating the, uh, the video signal, it's generating the game content. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Would you turn up the sound too? Sure. And... Uh, I cannot quite see the... Okay, turn it around until you can see. Sure. Yeah, I can see it right now. Let me go over the basic game mechanics. Oh, and a uh, couple of um, so the game manager basically in uh, has an innate function and an update function associated with it, and um, if it uh, innate has seen, then we have a um, a couple of like sprites attached to the scene, and um, the scene is attached to the game manager, and every time um, the game manager just just update the. Uh, sprites associated with the scene it is attached to, and if an event uh, like triggers a, like a switch thing, um, then um, basically the game manager just switch the scene between the different pointers. Okay. And right now we can start the game. If I press start game, we can see a little countdown screen, and the objective of the game is just to jump when the rope it's goes down, touches the ground, so the person cannot trip over the rope, and that's basically the objective of the game. And uh, as you can see here on the controller here, I'm just pressing the A button, and if you can see on the screen, and the speed goes up for every 10, 10 cycles, and I can even just move left or right to jump, and uh, if I accidentally tripped, you can see there's like a little tooltip showing like have like minus one life and if you see on the top right I have like the remaining lives right, right now I only have one so if I just if I die once more the game will be over and at 30 we have random speed so basically this game becomes more interesting and uh, we have to like dodge when it's falling down and it's getting slow and if I accidentally trip over we have this uh, we have this scene popping up showing game over and we can just press go back to the main menu Okay, now show me the game engine. Sure. So the game engine itself, right now I'm going to run it through a demo. The game engine, basically, right now we're seeing it's the whole scene. This, like the init function creates the box, it creates the text, and attached to the scene there's a sprite, there's a button, and on the, on the button there's a text called hit me. And if I hit the button, we can see like this is responsive to what I'm doing. And since I say it's audio switching here, it's like every time I hit the button, it basically just switch the audio buffer the DMA is reading to, and basically just outputs a different sound. If I hit it more for multiple times, I get... And since the game manager, it switches scene when, like, if, when an external event comes in. So if I use up and down key, I can go to like different scenes, and I can see right now it's a two-tip display scene. So this is a completely different sprite, although it says hit me here, it's a different sprite in a different scene. But right now we do load some same load the same sprite from the previous game. So if I hit hit me, we can see like the old tooltip mm -hmm. from the rope jumping game that is being loaded here. And each time I hit it, we just basically I just change the type of the tooltip and basically we can get like floating text and hopefully all of these code snippets can contribute to like the programmer and programmer just can directly use it to into just to program some new okay. features or new scenes of the game. Okay. Um so it's a it's completely standalone. It's running off batteries. It's in a it's in a uh, custom case, and uh, a very clean build. Thank you.